Good morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kendama news and culture is shared over the warmth of coffee. Today is a really exciting episode as we are not just featuring one guest, but we are featuring two guests this morning. They are two of Sweet's newest team members, M and Lauren. This episode is titled The Drip on M and Lauren, A New Generation. As we get ready to dive into this week's episode of The Review, I want to know down in the chat, as always, what are you drinking? Myself, as usual, I am making an AeroPress, or I've already made it, and I am enjoying it. It's actually a blend of like two different types of coffee that I had a little bit left of and put them together. Uh, but in a few moments here, in a couple minutes, we're going to get Em on here on her live, and Lauren's going to be with her, and we're going to be talking all about their journey. Uh, from not being Kendama players to now being quite well known in the community, even up into, and now more recently, their coveted sponsorship with Sweets Kendamas, one of the top brands in the Kendama community with some of the biggest influence in the community as well. So we want to know all about that story. You guys are going to get to know that entire story here today in the episode. As we get ready to dive in though, here's what you need to know. Two things. One, keep dropping those drinks down in the chat. Let me know what you're drinking. Secondly, also, we have space dedicated in each episode for live question and answers. The way to put your questions into the episode is by dropping them into that little box at the bottom with the question mark. So drop a question in there for M, drop a question in there for Lauren, drop a question in there for me if you really want. I spent like half of the last episode doing Q&As because we had some malfunctions with Instagram and it glitched out and I couldn't add any of our guests in. All that said is welcome to the review. Let me see what you all are drinking this morning. Oh my goodness, so many. We got uh, up here, Official D Purchase, Danny Purchase, the man, the myth, the legend who does some wood crafting. Uh, he is drinking oat milk latte. We got Day Day Dama with his bottle of water. Rach Dama's with her iced matcha latte. Spiffy Toys, Selvia, who does incredible wood burning art on Kendamas. She's drinking her Coke Zero this morning. We got Chuck Harbour with a glass of milk. I love it. We got Dan Rowan here. Uh, we got uh, DB Gerard. Uh, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, man. Instagram handles are so hard sometimes. Cold Brew Witch Oat Milk. With oat milk, I'm assuming. What's witch oat milk? Somebody let me know. <laughs> Never heard of this. Uh, thank you for the love, man. Really appreciate it, Matthew Kendama. Did I tag you? I'm confused. No, I don't think I tagged you. You might just be following me with notifications, and if that's the case, thank you. Uh, CJ, he is drinking a plain old cup of some Pete's coffee, and Artemis is in the chat drinking some half and half brisk iced tea lemonade. We call that an Arnold Palmer up here. I don't know if that's what everybody calls them, but we call that an Arnold Palmer when you mix iced tea and lemonade based off of, I think he's like a golfing legend. I don't really know Arnie Palmer. I don't really golf. I play Kanama. All that said, guys, uh, we're going to dive into this week's episode right away here. But before we do, um, I want to let you guys know that in two weeks, we are launching the first ever Cafe Kendama Brew Battle here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, which is a full-scale competition live and in-person with COVID regulations in place. We have a max population of 50 people, and we sold out within a week, which was crazy. Thank you so much for your support. This has been a wild journey for me, launching my first Kendama event here in the city. So thank you for all of your support. Thank you for sharing. There's so much more still going into it. Uh, and I just appreciate everything that you guys have been doing and helping encourage what is happening there. Uh, along with that, I want to say a huge congratulations to the competitors last weekend at the North American Kendama Open Online. There was Yasol winning beginners with Trevor and Quintus and Nguyen, I think is how you pronounce it. Giovanni, Lucas, Steph Lucier holding it down for Canada. We got Albert winning the freestyle and we had Nick Gallagher taking home the Open Division Championship. It was an incredible weekend. I was judging a lot of your matches uh, in the beginner and intermediate and again in the pro as well. And I had an absolutely amazing time and I hope you guys did as well. Uh, that said, Em and Lauren also competed this weekend and killed it. They placed second and third in their respective divisions, which was amazing. It was so cool to watch them, and I want to hear some of that story today. So all that said, let's give Em and Lauren a warm welcome as we get them on here. We will give them a moment. <laughs> em! Hi! 
Hi. Lauren, oh my goodness. Welcome to the review. Hi. Good to be here. Oh my goodness. I love your guys' background. You have so many plants. Oh yeah, this is only like half of it. The other half is on the other side. There's so many more. <laughs> that is awesome. You know, I admittedly, the plants behind me are not real. They're fake. They're from Ikea. Uh, I have you killed so many plants, plants in my life. <laughs> It's okay. You got to know when to hold them, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Maybe, maybe afterwards you guys can leave me some tips on how to, how to grow a plant effectively. And this is your dog. You, you guys have one or two dogs. This is no, Nestle. And then we got, we got our kitty too. We got Garnet here too. Oh my goodness. I love it. We got four people on the review today. This is exciting. We got, guests we, got we got the whole crowd. <laughs> I didn't prepare any questions for, for the dog and the cat. So it's like well, I my mouth up anyway. She likes it. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for hopping on the review this morning. I'm really excited to hear your guys' stories of becoming Kanama players to your now sponsorship with Sweets. And again, congratulations on your huge success in the North American Kanama Open. What was that like first off? It was really cool. I mean, it's interesting competing the first time online. You know what I mean? We haven't even gotten to experience it in person yet. So right. I mean, it's, it's weird to kind of even compare it because I'm sure in person it's just even crazier but I mean it's really cool to just compete in general even on um, like the sweet summer series it's kind of yeah. similar to that you know what I mean just having all of the players come together it's it's fun it really like amplifies the community a lot oh yeah uh, it was a lot of fun and we can talk a lot about that even at the at the end of our chat here this morning but before we dive in I always like to ask three questions I like to ask what are you drinking this morning are you a coffee drinker it's kind of a two-fold question it's my way of getting a fourth one in uh, secondly what is your favorite kanama trick and then thirdly who is the most inspiring player to you so why don't we start with Lauren uh, what are you drinking this morning okay so I got an iced coffee and I um, put an extra shot of espresso in it. Well, not an extra shot because it's not like there was one in there. So there's a shot of espresso. In okay. It. There's caramel in it and then a splash of cream. And that's okay. usually my go-to like anywhere. I like to get caught like an iced coffee or like a cold mm -hmm. brew. And then I like espresso in it and just like maybe some flavoring, maybe not cream. D depending yeah. on the day, right? <laughs> Definitely at least a little bit of cream. I'd like to one day not have to put cream in it. Um, but I'm definitely a coffee drinker. I love espresso, um, nitro cold brews. I love nitro oh. cold brew. Yeah, nitro so cold brew coffee. is so good. And nitro cold brew is so caffeinated too. The first time I ever had it was actually like a really bad experience for me because <laughs> I went on a coffee crawl with some friends. We went to four different coffee shops and I got the nitro cold brew on my last coffee of the four stops I went to. So I had a cappuccino, I had an Americano, I had an iced coffee, and then a nitro cold brew all within the span of like three or four hours, oh, which was goodness. really not was good. It? Oh my goodness, I almost threw up. I literally had like the wildest shakes I've ever had in my life. It was so <laughs> terrible, uh, but it tasted really good, so it wasn't too bad. You just um, don't know when to stop sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, oh, I drank so much over the, uh, the NACO weekend, I think. I totaled the amount of like espresso shots essentially that I drank because I always do double shots when I'm making my my Americanos. Uh -huh. And so I had a total of 14 shots of espresso over the course of the weekend. <laughs> I kind of- hard, you represent for your espresso gang. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what about yourself, Em? What are you drinking this morning? I actually have an iced coffee too. And I have a shot of espresso in mine. And then I do a little bit of mocha and oat milk. I love oat milk in my coffee. Nice. I love almond milk, but like oat milk is just superior. And the coffee shop Avenue Two and I, where we get our coffee from, they just got oat milk, and we're. I was like, oh my god, thank god. So yeah, I'm huge, huge win for for us non dairy drinking folk. I yeah. I'm lactose intolerant, so I just normally don't get anything with milk in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I'm I'm more of a coconut milk fan than oat milk. I, I haven't don't... tried it. But I feel like so, it would just depend. But like, I feel like the common complaint with the alternatives is it just tastes like it tastes too oaty or whatever I'm like, yeah. well, it's oat milk. <laughs> you know, like, that is what it, like yeah, that, that's exactly what you're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's jump over to you, Em. Uh, what is your favorite all-time kendama trick? I, well, it doesn't have to be one you've done. It could be one I, you really admire. I feel like I'd have to say, it started off as like Lighthouse. I love Lighthouse tricks, but I feel like it branched into Whirlwind and Whirlwind variations. I love yeah. messing around with Whirlwinds, like no matter if it's inward, regular, you know what I mean, doubles. I love it. It's just a satisfying trick for sure. 
Yeah, and you recently just hit something that was crazy. What was it? It was a, a whirlwind late double Ken flip. Was that what it was? Oh my goodness, yeah. I still haven't hit anything like that. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, it was hard. It was a grind. But <laughs> it was like when I actually, it's just getting the quick release right, you know what I mean? But I feel like that, grinding that also has helped me with my recent endeavor into juggling because the catch and release yeah, yeah. is kind of hard for me. But yeah, Ab it was fun. Absolutely. And what about for yourself, Lauren? Um, I always had said like stalls were my favorite. Um, but now I think I'm kind of getting into like lunars, specifically inward lunars kind of being my favorite and doing different variations with those. Um, but I still am like a sucker. Like I love handle stall. It just comes really eat. They come like a little bit more naturally to me than the, the flips and stuff. Like, especially like with Emily, like I feel like I'm kind of like the complete opposite. Mm. Like whirlwinds are really <laughs> hard for me still sometimes. And like- They're I hard for me too. I miss I my world checks you're all the time. Tama -honed. Like you're really tomahawn no matter what. I could not begin to do anything late, let alone yeah. late double. So, but like, yeah, I love stalls and inward and lunars. And lunars. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so last question, and then we'll we'll jump into the meat of our conversation here today. We'll talk a bit about your journeys and sweets kendamas, and more recently the the NACO competition. Uh, but who is the most inspirational player for the both of you uh, individually? If you want to start, uh, Lauren, go ahead. Um, I can start. I can't. It's hard for me to say anyone specific, like a specific person. But I do want to say probably the people who. Um, like do other things along with Kendama. Like I just put so much time into Kendama that I couldn't imagine doing multiple things and also like making time for your Kendama and learning new tricks mm. and stuff like that. So I would say those people who kind of just like double up on things and they just do multiple things. I think that's really inspiring to me in itself. Um, and probably the people who kind of just it comes naturally to them like it and that inspires me i think for sure to just like mm. just keep going and consistency wise i think that really inspires me so mm. but that's something that i'm definitely going to think about like one specific person i just never really thought about it you know yeah that's fair uh, what about for yourself emily is there someone that you find as the most inspirational person in your life for kendama um Someone who definitely inspires me a lot is Cam, Kendomalicious. I, oh! He is, I love him so much. He is the epitome of when you talk about love and support in the Kendama community, he is my go-to. I, ever since we got started, he supports all of us, Lauren, her brothers. Yeah. I mean, I know plenty of people that can say that he's just a constant, like, light in the community, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he shreds so hard, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's, he's just... Amazing, and he never stops either. Oh yeah, Ronnie too yeah. stank. He's like the definition of inspiration. Yeah, and he is so good, and I love what he's doing with Stanktober. Uh, yeah, it's really, it's been a lot of fun. People to have fun, exactly. Yeah, yeah shout out to Ronnie fun, down in the chat. Keep you going. He wants to, you know, he always wants to keep us playing and stuff like that. So. For yeah, sure. e everyone in the chats. Just, <laughs> yeah, everyone in the chats just hyping him up, loving him. So Ron, Ronnie's yeah. a huge influence. He's been around for forever, and that Pikachu hat of his is so unforgettable. <laughs> when you see that at live events, it's like, who is this kid? And then you're like, oh, that's Ronnie. Mixed with and the then tribal you get... shorts, the tribal shorts. <laughs> yes. I love it. I live for it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, we're going to dive into the meat of our conversation here right away. But before we do, I just want to remind those that are joining into the chat right now that you have an opportunity to interact in today's episode. The best way to do that is A, by commenting down in the chat, or by B, asking a question to Lauren or M by means of that Q&A tool at the bottom. That's that rectangle with the question mark. Drop questions in there. We have two spots dedicated in this episode to ask them your questions. So all that said, let's dive into the review. I want to know from both of you, uh, I imagine your, your paths kind of crossed as a part of the Kendama journey, but where was your first point of Kendama contact? <laughs> well, it had to have been when I got my first Kendama. Yeah, for sure. Which was like last fall, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was in August of last year. So yeah, and that was a striped prime. 
So that okay. Was the first, so that was. So how did you stumble on it? Me. Yeah. Um. So Boogie T, I love Boogie T, and I saw that he had one, and I think that he was getting his own mod, mm -hmm. so that's what really sparked. Right. Like, hmm. And then I looked into it, and I saw. Um, that it like helped with patience and it helped mm. with balance. And, and I was like, wow, well, that's really interesting. So I got it and I ordered it and I was on vacation when I ordered it. So it was waiting for me when I got home. And uh, yeah, I just kind of like, she just started playing with it. And then I don't, I didn't start for a few months after that. And I think it was just in a matter of yeah. like, I, I liked it. I think I hit like two cups and I was like oh, okay yeah. this is kind of fun like so I got the boogie tea mod mm -hmm. and then I started messing on your prime and then I got my own I think I, I got mine the day I got my wisdom teeth taken out and I yeah. was like <laughs> crying sweet about posted it that. no sweet posted that you guys that was the start of it that's so funny very first kendama yeah, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I remember specifically just being so happy because I was also just so looped up and traumatized <laughs> um but yeah and then we just I mean for obvious reasons, the whole like lockdown thing that kind of just mm. forced us to take it more seriously. And then yeah. they had, it was right after 28 Tricks Later and they did the Honed at Home. And it was just, I mean, it just picked up and we both had like a mutual love for it and we just sessioned all the yeah. time. It was inevitable. So, so you guys kind of stumbled into it without having someone introduce it to you. You found it through Boogie T, which, hey, first off is like always a really cool story now for me because that never used to be the case of how people came to Kendama. It used to be such a cult thing that it, you would only ever know about Kendama because someone introduced it to you and they let you play theirs. But now, like with Boogie T, Reed Stark, Boo Johnson, all of these like major influencers that are, are repping their brand, repping their mod, are bringing so many more people into Kendama, which is unreal, first off. And so it's always a cool story now because that wasn't my story. Like I was introduced to it by a friend that I, I worked with at a camp, like, I don't know, like five years, six years ago now. That's crazy. That is crazy. So, That's super crazy. cool. Um, and then, so how did you keep with it? So obviously quarantine probably played a little bit of an effect, but was it that you got engaged with the online Kendama, uh, like Instagram community, or did you end up meeting some people along the way? Yes, no. definitely the community online because I don't know, I feel like we kind of bounced off each other and we both just kind of crashed into it at the same time. Yeah. So it was just kind of... Well, I can also say there were months where I was like the only one, like before, because I don't even think I showed it to you like right away. Yeah, no. Like I probably got it because I wasn't even super interested in it right away. Like it wasn't until when I got the Boogie Team on when I really started like actually like like grinding you know what I mean and then yeah, yeah. pick up and so in those turns. in those months that I that Emily didn't play and I was literally the only one like I would just play by myself in my room and like a lot of people know like that's not the most fun that's definitely not the most fun way to play Kendama it's with a bunch of people to like hype each other up and stuff so if it wasn't for the Kendama community like the online supporting me and stuff like that like i might not have like kept going with it you know what i mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. have anyone no even when we around. actually learned we taught ourselves mostly everything we wanted yeah. to learn besides sweets tutorials shout out sweets tutorials yeah, yeah sh <laughs> shout out the qr codes in the in the cups bringing us all the content love that yeah. i can remember in my old apartment just being in there and then like watching the tutorials and Mm -hmm. trying to do the stuff and it, yeah it's just uh, it's crazy like everyone's so awesome <laughs> yeah okay so you you started with the boogie tea like boogie yeah. tea was the influence you bought yeah. the the prime and then you got a boogie tea mod you started playing with it uh the uh, older kendama so then what was your first kendama that you bought m mine was my little baby prime i have it up on the wall yeah, here. oh it. let's go sure it's and it's I, it's like a combination of letters and stuff like that um but then i feel like the one that i actually because i got this oh, one my first one and just kind of hit like cups and stuff oh yeah i love those ones i love that design on there but yeah. then as soon as i got um i got like a phase one mod and i kind of grinded out i think i hit my first one on that but my reed stark the moonlight safari mm. that one is when i just actually felt like I just kept leveling up on it. And right. I remember specifically, I wish I could go back and find out who it was, but somebody was like, you're gonna find out that that is like the key mod. 
<laughs> and then um, they were right. They were totally right. That's so cool. I actually have not yet purchased a Reed Stark or played one like extensively, which is kind of sad because I used to be super into BMX and I followed Reed Stark and, and I got into Kendama, I think, before him or around the same time. And I didn't know that he was into Kendama. And then I showed up to MKO 2018 and it was about that same year that I like realized that Reed played and he had come up with a mod and stuff. And I was like, whoa, that's so sick. This BMX <laughs> legend that I looked up to also plays this like Japanese traditional toy. And, so and it got me so hyped. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's cool how they cross over for sure. I, I wanted um, the, the red one, the simple sessions one that he had too. And her brother, her brother loves going and finding old kendamas and collecting. He just got like the original Safari mod that actually mm -hmm. looked like a giraffe print. And he was so excited about that. It was fun. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. So I want to know then a little bit more about what kept you on the journey. So you obviously went deep into the Instagram community and you got connected there pretty quick. But at what point, if there was a point, maybe you haven't yet, did you start meeting actual players and have you been to, to real life jams with people? We haven't met anybody, like, we haven't met anybody on okay, our team, so but we had we a had jam, jam ourselves yeah. with, oh. with there. We got some, a few people around us, like, in our community, kind of into it. And then some people that I actually went to college with, they are, like, they live a few times over, like, a few hours away. They actually came and met up with us, too. So we just kind of grabbed the few people who did play Kendama, and we just kind of made our own meetup. But, yeah, wow. we didn't met any of our teammates or anything like that, yeah, unfortunately. That and that's crazy. You actually haven't met your teammates. So then I'm curious, like, we can jump into this a little bit later, but who filmed your guys' uh, announcement edit edits with Sweets? We did. You guys filmed each other? Oh, my goodness. That's actually so sweet. Oh, you guys killed those edits. And, we and you grinded. Who put, who put them together for them. Okay. We just sent him. We just got all that, but, and we just, like, sent him, like, the whole load over, and he just... Yes made it into i know they turned we out just so i'd come home on the weekends from work and we just set out mish somewhere and just yeah. grind or do <laughs> iphone it was just like mm -hmm. That's awesome. That is so cool. And in some ways, like a, a story that almost sort of reflects like a Gallagher story that both of you have been playing for together for so long that you're getting to push each other. But what I think is cool about what you were saying earlier is that you both went in different directions with your play style, mm -hmm. which yeah, probably really complements each other in, in some really unique ways. Yeah. Like, M, you're going for like the juggles, Ken's late flips and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Whereas Lauren's just going for the insane Tama control, mm -hmm. which is unreal. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. And so dope. Helps it helps so much because since we do different things, we can teach, teach each, each other. other. Like, I'm serious. See whip Tips and tricks. See whip for, um, Nico. I, for Nako. Like, I was, I got see whips almost every try in Nako. And like the week before, like a week before, I had never even done them before. And she was really good at them. Like she had them honed. So she showed me and it's I got It's so them. hard to try to it's explain perfect. it, you know what I mean? How to make that mm -hmm. loop. It's like, it looks like sorcery if you don't know what's going on and then you just have to get used to it. But yeah, that was fun. That was, okay, that like was saucy. <laughs> That's awesome. So, okay, to wrap up this first section and then we'll jump into some live Q&A here. Uh, I wanna know what has been the most impactful growth in your life because of Kendama. I definitely feel like the sweet sponsorship was a huge catalyst in it, but I personally just love seeing the growth and how many girls are playing Kendama and not mm. just even playing, but just being proud and what they do and posting and getting so much support. That's, I absolutely love that. I, I love to see it. And like girls saying that, you know, yeah. we inspired them. That means so much in not even just girls, you know what I mean? Anybody. Yeah, but anyone. Spreading the Kendama love to people who have never seen it before. You know what I mean? Because yeah. this it happened to us and look where it brought us type thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you get to steward that influence really, really well, right? And helping spread that same love, that same, you know, that same wholeheartedness off to other people in their journey and inspire them to keep playing. So you guys are doing that well. I'm stoked on that. Let's jump into some live Q&A here. I have no idea what questions are in here right now. Um, okay, we got, we got a fun one from your Canadian teammate, uh, Jake Shire or Kanama.Mamba. He asks, uh, 1v1 in a boxing ring, who wins between you? Oh my god, that's not that's a, that's not even a question. <laughs> that goes to M. I yeah, I'm I'm the strong. One. She's really yeah, she's really <laughs> strong, and I'm just like 
not really that aggressive in general. If anything, I would be like Lauren's defense dog. Like if anything were to happen mm. in the house, I'd be the one who would be like yeah. beating somebody up. But she doesn't like I'm not she doesn't like violent. beat up on me or anything. Yeah. <laughs> this is an abusive relationship. No, not abusive. <laughs> okay, uh, Gandhi.lives asked, how does Kandama blend into other aspects of your life, such as careers or jobs? Also, I didn't ask, but what do you, outside of Kandama and outside of your sweet sponsorship, are you guys students? Are you working? What's, what's going on in your life outside? We're working. I work a merchandising job. Oh, cool. I travel a lot for work and yeah, she's and I'm, a waitress. I'm a waitress. So do you ever get to pull out sick tricks while waitressing? Not really. <sighs> Sometimes I do. I'm just usually so busy. And yeah, fair. And the time that I'm not busy, I like, it's not really what I want to do. It's just, it's, I wish I could. I wish it was more of like a chill or a vibe like that, but I'm pretty much just like always like doing stuff. But I always I see random people because usually when I travel and like I'm playing whenever I'm at work, I'm in a hotel parking lot from wherever I'm staying for work. And I just see random people and they just kind of give you the look like, what is that? Yeah. I just had somebody the other day. They were like, I haven't seen a yo-yo in years. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the classic yo-yo. <laughs> Even that, you know what I mean? Or my coworkers, I just uh, got my coworkers into it. So now they come out, they'll sneak out and session yes. a little bit. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, spreading the love to the coworkers. I, uh, one of my coworkers, his name's Thomas, and I, I've been trying to get my, my coworkers into Kendama a little bit. And, and they like it. They love it, both as like a, a, a brand thing, but also just they like the game. But Thomas in particular, I told him one day, I'm, I'm just going to leave a Kendama on my desk. I'm leaving early. You play with it as much as you want. And he's like, okay. And like, he definitely played with it later and he loves it. It's like, I'm going to slyly just start leaving it because I think for me, I've, I've realized that when I leave and leave a Kendama, people will play with it. But if I'm there, they're like, I don't want to do it in front of him because yeah, exactly. what, if I, what exactly. if I can't do it? <laughs> so uh, that that's my new strategy is just leave one behind it's that's been working smart. that's sneaky that's sneaky um brett walters or boston w a longtime listener and a good friend of mine asked what do you listen to while seshing i usually go for like of the trees i like um i listen to tie-dye kai ganja white night like that kind of stuff or i like to listen to there's like a weird branch off where then I'll go to like, I'll listen to Tara Reid and mm. stuff like that. Like it's, it kind of just depends on what mood I'm going for or what trick I'm going for. Right. But yeah, you, you have, like chill there, bass or like some thug rap, something like that. Yeah. If, if you, if you're running out of suggestions, there's this podcast about Kendama and coffee that I've heard really inspires deeper play. You should check it out sometime. I think it's called the review. Not okay, really yeah, familiar yeah, with it. I've heard some good things about it though. Very simulating. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what do you listen to while sessioning? Ganja White Night. Nice. Yeah. My go-to. Okay. We got a couple more, and then we'll jump back into more of the sweet side of the conversation here right away. We, there's so many questions, which is always awesome. Uh, another one of your Canadian teammates, uh, Nard, Dama, or Frank, Francois, uh, he plays for Sweets Canada. He asked, do you name your plants? And if so, what are a couple of them? I feel like I used to name them, but we just have so we many. Have many I had one named Saffron. She was amazing, but she just didn't survive the move. Oh, yeah. And, ah, and, poor Saffron. Yeah, Saffron was like a really special one. Mm -hmm. I think once she didn't survive, we kind I of think just, we just like, kind of dwindled out. But yeah. usually we do. I name almost everything else. But yeah, if anything, we should name our Monstera. It's I like just huge. call it her Monstera. It's our giant Swiss cheese plant. That one would probably need named, and then this one would probably need named. So if anybody would like to uh, help us name them, we are open to suggestions. Well. Shoot them a DM, let them know what they should name their plants. Hey, I don't, I don't have any plants that have lived longer than a month, so if I name them, I'm <laughs> pretty sure it. they're cursed. You can't so make the so can't I won't give you any, any suggestions there. Uh, okay, let's get two more questions. Actually, this one's not a question, and unfortunately, some of it got cut off, but Rach Dama's 
I uh, wanted to say, not a question, but I appreciate you two and your inspiration and influence on this community for women. You're both B-E-A dot, 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 and I can't read the rest of it because it gets cut off if it's not long enough, but I'm assuming she's saying you're both beautiful and continue to inspire people. So thank you, Rach, so much for the encouragement. We love you, Rach. You're amazing. And if anybody's inspiring, it's you. I was you're so say, supportive. Every time, anytime I've amazing. interacted with her ever, it's like and she's the so best. And it warms me. It's yeah, so she's amazing yeah she, she's wonderful she's amazing uh really appreciate her i actually regretted yes oh, yeah oh my that's goodness another one that's another person who inspires me she does so many different things mm -hmm. like she juggles and i love seeing all the different stuff she does and then she still just comes back and posts like these awesome clips and i'm like mm -hmm. how she just and she sings she's, she's powered she's got it all she's, she's a powerhouse yeah. she is Fantastic. I, 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 I kind of regretted it because I, I forgot about it when I asked Steve if he wanted to be on the review. And I definitely wanted to have Steve and Rach in an episode kind of like this and with both of them. But I definitely like thought about it too late when I messaged him. So I'll, I'll try and get Rach on in a future episode because I think she'd be awesome. Okay, um, one more question. And this one actually will lead us into our second half of the conversation here. And we'll try and get to the rest of them at the end of the episode. Keep dropping them in here. These are great questions. All right, Chan the Man's going to kick off our second half of the conversation by asking, what were your thoughts when you were first offered the spot on suites? Now, to kind of get around <laughs> that question a little bit, I want to ask, what was that lead up to getting sponsored by suites? Just tell us the story. The story is actually pretty funny. Um, we, first of all, I mean, we had a few people following us regardless. So whenever it kind of creeped in, like, suites followed us, it was, we were like, hey, did did Sweets follow you? And then we were like, yeah, did, did they follow you? And it was like, that was kind of weird. But we actually, the day we were moving into our new apartment was when they contacted us and we were together. And I remember, oh my gosh, it gives me like chills just thinking about it, it's so weird. But she, I remember she just says, I'm away! And she screamed because she's outside and I'm inside. And I, I was so scared, I'm like, what, what? And she just like was shaking, like giving me her phone. and. We just started freaking out. Like I read her message and like it said that she got or they wanted to give her a spot on the team and it was crazy. And then later on you scroll and then it mentions that they are also going to ask me and it was just like a moment where we were just like, what is happening? Like it was a whole new chapter in our lives, like a crazy, yeah. crazy day. It was just weird because it was the day we were moving into this apartment and there had there was so much anticipation moving into here because Emily and I have been like best friends for like uh, like 10 years now pretty much and we haven't lived this is our first time ever living together and we're just like ready like we needed so to excited in, in the day we got to move in early we weren't supposed to even move in on that day and we got to move in that day such and a it weird just happened to be that day that they messaged us and we were like whoa what's happening it was seriously so so crazy so yeah like a new chapter so thing. yeah um like, just to just to get some details on that story when did this happen when did you get that message uh, we would have to go back and look sometime in may i was gonna say okay was may. Late may late yeah. may okay no way and then you were announced in the summer at one of the skos that's right mm -hmm. yeah it was uh like a few months later just because um there was some other stuff going on. It wasn't necessarily like the right time. Um, just getting our stuff together because there was also three of us figuring right, out. Yeah, Carly as well. Oh my gosh. But it was so crazy, you know, knowing and trying to keep it a secret. And also like that just fueled the fire even more. That really put a fire under our butts to get us grinding. Yeah. And it just made us level up even more because then we really pushed each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So when when you were reached out to by Sweets, uh, and you had a couple months in between your announcement and there, how long did it take you? Because I think a lot of people are always curious, how long does it take to film an announcement edit? Or how long did it take you guys? Uh, announcement edits are a pretty big deal in the community. They're kind of like a showcase of the character, the person. And, and it's a really cool opportunity to just present yourself to the world as a part of that brand and company. So how long did it take you guys? It It's funny because we went out now I, I leave for work all week so we'd come home on the weekends and we just kind of leave and go grind out and stuff like that and it was funny because we filmed for our announcement video and then we I mean we went out and just really did go for it but we then had everything together and kind of time had passed and we just kept 
leveling up. So we just felt like we were like not happy with the old footage that we got. So mm. we then went and reseshed out a whole bunch of new tricks to add in there. So it was kind of like we were doing that the whole time type of deal. You know what I mean? We yeah. definitely had our footage all taken care of by the time we sent it over to Coop, which was a little while before they announced us. But I mean, it took us a while just because of time framing and stuff like that. It just, mm -hmm. I guess it really just depends on if you want to focus on tricks and then you got to get the B-roll. But yeah, it definitely took a while for sure in multiple tries. Yeah, so cool. Um, so, okay, tell us a little bit about what it's been like since joining the Sweets Kanamas team. There is a large network of players on that team <laughs> from all over the world. There's a team in Canada, there's teams in Japan, teams in Europe, teams all over the place. And you're part of the, the, the North American, but the global team of Sweets Kanamas. It, that's just like huge in itself, first off. Uh, so congratulations from me to you and from all of the review listeners to you, congrats. Uh, secondly, just what has that been like? How, talk to me about what it's like being sponsored. Well, it's a lot of like focus on, not focus on you, but you know there's a lot more eyes on you than there was before, um, which I mean, I was totally okay with because we were kind of like to the point where we really wanted to like, do something with it like what emily said earlier inspiring lots of more like women to get into it mm. because like you know what a lot of people don't realize is that with all of the men in the community and being so amazing that it's it's intimidating mm -hmm. like mm. people that will stop someone from picking up like just even picking it up just to even throw it up onto big like how you said with your coworker, you know what i mean like, yeah intimidating. so when people see us like do it specifically it, how we've grown even since being on suites you know what i mean that's I yeah think. yeah and we were ready to like i think put that out on a lot bigger level so i so the spotlight was totally good um that's definitely a big difference. I think it's just been cool even, I mean, we've talked a lot with everybody on the team over like Zoom calls and stuff like mm -hmm. that. We have different team meetings where we just talk. We've had multiple um, Zoom calls. We just chat, you know what I mean? It takes hours. We all just mm -hmm. kind of shoot the breeze. And it's, I mean, that's been really cool to see these people that we've idolized from the very beginning, you know what I mean? Even just how we rep suites, we bought suites and then, kind of flipping it pretty quickly to the point where now we're a part of it and being mm -hmm. with all these amazing people, you know, even like Matt and like all those people, they're just so welcome. Even Matt's wife, it's just, it's been really yeah, cool. Yeah, she's great. Out. You have like the, the idolization, but to get to know everybody on a personal level and realizing how amazing everybody is and you even get like cool behind the scenes action, that has been really fun. Yeah. Like, the different dynamic shift for us. So, so it, Maybe in a, in a short microcosm, uh, what is a behind the scenes story from your time being sponsored that you're allowed to share that would be, that would be fun to share for those that are listening in? Because there's so many people that tune into this podcast in particular that are kind of looking for those sponsorships <laughs> that don't really know what goes behind the scenes at companies, maybe a Zoom call. Is there a funny story that you'd like to introduce us to? really i don't necessarily the first thing that comes to my mind it's not very good it's not a very good example but everyone just like always bags on norks <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so funny because i never like knew that like expected oh, it before oh and but i think that people actually do that like not over the zoom meetings <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well yeah <laughs> i think i have to realize sorry norks i still love we love you so much, Dorks. No, did did I, you watch his his I video that, that he just posted? Or even what? did you just watch his video that he posted? I think like yesterday or a day ago or two days ago um, about uh, him judging at Nako. No. Oh yeah. See, he like didn't. Did he like not show up? Or something? Oh yeah. No, it was just so funny. He like he he ended up getting message messaged in the group chat or something like that. At least this is how he tells the story that he was messaged to come and help judge. And he's like, yeah, I'll judge. Didn't know any of the tricks, hopped in, turned it into a bit of the Nork show. It was really funny. Everybody in the chat yeah. thought it was hilarious, but it definitely like sort of derailed a little bit of the momentum that was going, but it was a really engaging time. And I think it hyped everybody up in a really fun way. Uh, but then, but they were, <laughs> yeah, they were like, Norks can't judge anymore. <laughs> I feel like also knowing like random things that are happening, like adding, 
like new merch or new mods like random stuff like that even when, like when we were keeping the secret of adding us you know what i mean we they talk about how they were going to tease it and stuff like that it's just saucy you get to know yeah. what you need to know that's fun too yeah like the christian fraser batch too you probably knew oh about that a God. while back yeah Oh yeah, the coffee goodness. mod or the froth I mod. So oh my goodness! Excited about that. So yeah. excited. It plays Very like excited. I love that mod so much. I've been grinding nothing but lighthouses because that, like, the little engraving is such a little cheat code. I love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get mine. Uh, I think uh, Bray, who runs Sweets Kanamas Canada, is bringing me out one so that I don't have to pay for shipping when he comes out for Brew Battle in just a couple weeks. Um, okay, I, I want to know a little bit about uh, your journey competing now with NACO, your first like large scale competition, brand new onto the Sweets Kanamas team, haven't been playing for that long and clutching second and third place in your guys' division. What was that like? It's crazy. It was nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, like, just so worried about practicing. Like, we were like, we need to practice, practice. And then I think we kind of, like, slowly came to a realization that we were like, well, we can grind these tricks, like, as much as we want to. But whenever those, like, nerves set in, like, if they do set in, we're not going to be able to, like, control them. So I think toward closer to the competition it got – we kind of focused, we were still focusing on grinding the tricks and practicing, but it also focused a lot on like just staying relaxed and keeping cool and taking it like as casual mm -hmm. as possible, even though it's definitely not, it wasn't casual. Like you said, it was mm -hmm. our first, mm -hmm. it's our first big competition sponsor. <laughs> but I mean, we got to play each other too. So then by the time that happened, it was like, it was too casual. It was just like, yeah, it, it was mm -hmm. like. It was like our yeah. living room, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It was no different than the past however many days we spent just like, yeah. I'd be like, okay, now we're going to do C with airplane. Like, just <laughs> random stuff like that. It was funny. Yeah. Um, I noticed Chad dropped a, a comment in the chat there. Uh, I didn't... Uh, I think, I don't know how to pronounce the name, so forgive me if you're listening, but Nguyen, I think is the pronunciation, or Win, mm -hmm. something like that. A Vietnamese, I think. Uh, I, Chad says, I don't think he meant to enter the women's competition. Do you know the story there or what happened there? Is that true? Is that accurate? Yeah, um, it, it's just a difficult situation because you go through the language barrier and then you also have gender where, you know what I mean? It's not, it's a f more fluid now, I guess. So there's multiple challenges that you face there with that. Not to mention there's no two-step authentication of if you click i'm a girl and want to compete right. it's gonna be like are you really you know what i mean and it was yeah. a genuine honest mistake that we weren't mad at it um we when got in contact with me apologized said that he made a mistake and it happens um the only thing with that is it just went to the point where it was unnoticed and he had no idea what was going on until after he we he won in the finals and then he just kind of brought it to light so it's just a matter of where do we go from it now? Because it's just, it's so far after the fact. And it, mm -hmm. just, it's, it was a touchy situation in the beginning, but um, you know, everybody's okay with it. Everybody's understands what happened. You know, we faced it with an open mind, open outlook type deal. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of in the midst of deciding where do we go in terms of replacing everybody and- Yeah. Um, yeah. And and you know what that that's kind of the sort of complications that come with playing such a global and international game, yeah, right? Is that we have work. these language barriers, and and as as kind of frustrating as some of those things can be, it's also kind of the cool part of how we are this broad, wide collective community with so many different people from so many different backgrounds all gathering around this one little toy called Kendama. And I, I find that freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, even if there's complications that come with that, I think that we all get to progress forward together in a cool way. So that gets me excited. Absolutely. But nonetheless, it'll be a funny story that I think people will talk about for a while yeah, afterwards. It, it, it was yeah. it handled just fine, you know what I mean? We're all okay with it. No hard feelings whatsoever. And like I said, I've been in contact with Nguyen, so is Lauren. You know what I mean? Honest mistakes happen. It's mm -hmm. just, it is, it's just a funny story. Yeah. And an honest mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So looking forward in the last couple of minutes that we have here, 
Uh, what are your hopes for Kendama? Where do you want to be in a couple of years from now? Where do you want to see the community? I titled this episode A New Generation because I think both you, uh, both of you, Em and Lauren, are bringing something to the scene that's really cool. You guys are a new generation of players. You're inspiring a newer generation of players as well. So where do you see Kendama going and how do you see your roles in that journey? I definitely see it becoming way more widespread. Um, even being in the community now and seeing how widespread it actually is, you know, like you said, it's like a cult following type thing. You don't know about it until you get into the community, mm -hmm. but I definitely feel like it's growing just because of how many people go out, play it and how much curiosity it raises. I just want to see, obviously I want to see us progress and stick with it more, but I definitely just hope to see it widespread out more to where it's, kind of more well known at least even where somebody's not like what is that you know what yeah. i mean they'll just be like oh they're playing with the kendama yeah i want to see that more recognition for sure definitely yeah where it's just more publicly acceptable to wear a kendama yeah. on your neck i mean i do it anyways but, <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, not everybody does it yet it's a yeah. fashion statement All right, and what about <laughs> yourself it. lauren um i definitely think i just want to see a lot more of women in the community it's growing huge i see more and more every day already so it's already happening but I want to see more lady sponsorships and more mm. teams getting some, like, like, I feel like ever since the day that all we were announced, I've just been waiting, waiting for someone else on another team. Like, especially the girls that we see all the time, just constantly shredding and grinding. I want to see mm -hmm. good things for them. Yeah, for sure. So there's I so many that. deserving women. Okay. Yeah. So on that train then, if you could both shout out three women in the Kanama community that you think are inspirational, that everybody in the listeners chat here today should go and follow, who are they? Oh my gosh, I can't. It's hard for me to say three. It's hard, definitely. Worley Rhea. Worley love, Rhea. I love her so much. Um, Dear Dar, I love her. Mm -hmm. Ray Damas, absolutely. Steph, um, <laughs> Steph, Lisa. So, <laughs> so many, okay. Lisa. What, what about you, Lauren? Who are, who, are your who are three that you would recommend? Oh, well, I'm like this a lot. I know, I couldn't stop, I'm sorry. I know, oh, <laughs> there's so many. Uh, I am So many amazing players. <laughs> Steph <laughs> Lucier here yeah, in I Canada is one of my favorites. Too. Cake Dama, Amanda. Cake Dama is really mm. good. He's given me a couple, I love the Dama bears that she sent me. Mm -hmm. um, Kelson Herdama is really good. Yeah. She, I hope to be as good as she is at down spikes. I feel like. Oh she, my goodness. She, she down spikes so aggressively. It's so how intimidating. Does this, like, not break? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here, here are my top three that, that are my three favorites for forever. Uh, their play style. Oh my gosh. And that, that is so hard. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's like four or five more that I want to add to the list. But if I had to pick three right now, I would say Lisa from New Zealand. Uh, she's amazing, very good, uh, very competitive, an amazing player. Steph Lucier from Canada, because I love Canadian players, and Steph is unreal, and she's been an OG influence in the community forever. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, Misu, like Jam Cotty on, on, on Insta. Uh, she is like probably my number one or number two favorite players, regardless of anything. She, her play style is the most inspirational thing in the world to me. So if you aren't following any of these women in the community, uh, you guys who are listening need to go follow them because they are amazing players. They're amazing influences and they, they, they're definitely worth following because they are coming up and they're already big. Yep. That yeah. said, we, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying about Misu. Thank you for bringing Misu in. <laughs> I could never forget Misu. Oh my goodness, she's so nice. I, I really appreciate her so much. Okay, um, in the last six minutes or seven minutes here before we hit the 55 mark and we got five minutes to wrap up, let's try and hit some Q&As that were left in the question box. If you guys that are still in the chat listening have some more questions you want to answer or get answered, drop those in there right now and we'll try and hit as many as we can in here. Okay. Uh, and dot two Ken asked, what is your favorite Tama color to jam? Tama color. Oh my gosh. Obviously the boogie tea turquoise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The boogie tea is classic. I really love like the natty look and like the, the coffee look of 
both the decade mods. Yeah, I was just gonna say next, mm -hmm. both the looks of the decade mods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those ones are unreal. I love the decade. I've owned three of the original. I have, oh, maybe four actually. I have two of the batch of zeros because Jacob Treble sent me a box of Kendamas, like his old Cobras, and threw in a batch of zero Christian Fraser. So I have two out of the original 50 now. Only That's 48 to go. That's a flex. Um, <laughs> If so, if any of you guys in the chat have any of those other 48, let me know. <laughs> Gonna build, build the collection. Um, okay, uh, spiffy.toys, this is Selvia. She's from Canada and she runs uh, a, a little Kendama uh, shop out there. Um, she does incredible Kendama wood burning art. I have uh, her Kendama that she sent me right here. It's got Coffee Gang written all over it. She like wood burnt oh, all dope. around it. Coffee in here, it's amazing. Wow. Um, she asked, how does sponsorship work? Uh, do you get free kendamas? What else do you get from your sponsorship with sweets? If you're allowed to say. Yeah, we get our kendamas. We got all of the new kendamas. We get I, my family sweatshirt we just got. We get hats, random stuff, stuff that they want us to, like random stuff that they're going to release, that they want us to yeah. kind of tease or our post beanies. pictures in. So beanies. We get um, bags. We got like the old Nako bag, random stuff like that. But yeah, mainly kendamas and a lot of stickers. We get a lot of stickers. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I'm trying to plaster my whole desk here with stickers, but I don't have quite enough to do it. So I don't want to start the job and not finish it. So if any of you guys want to mail me out some stickers, let me know. <laughs> I'll send you a stack. Nice. I, I would love that. Okay. Um, Lindsay, uh, Lynn Zeb one, two, three asked, have you seen Rebecca play? I'm not sure which Rebecca she's referring to, but maybe, you know, Rebecca Van Horn that she does all the leg bounces. Oh yeah. 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 I think that's what she's talking about. And if so, yeah, that's also a really, really like person who has a really dope style yeah. of play. I am like so precise. Cause I've done like a knee bounce whirlwind. That was like the extent of my knee bouncing, but she did like a wing knee bounce to wing. Like that's insane. Yeah, crazy. Okay, uh, hand roll Harry asked, how did y'all meet? Lauren, do you want to answer this one? Um, yeah, we met in seventh grade. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> way. Seventh grade, Emily moved here from Massachusetts and we met in French class and like the, the very first day that we have, the first day of French class, we sat like, we just, or, yeah. Do, do both of you still speak French? No. Uh, I end up taking Spanish in college. Uh, so, tu es pas français, c'est très terrible? Oui. <laughs> <laughs> me, me too. In, in seventh grade, I went to a French immersion for a year and I got kicked out because I was really bad at French. And so, well, I, I did now. French for a year too. <laughs> if you could only show them now. <laughs> if I could only show them, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what else do we got in here? Oh, Street Kendomico, Nathan, uh, he's one of our sponsors for Brew Battle coming up. He asked, any doubles tricks in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have a doubles trick in mind that you want to you wanna leak to us that you're, that you're going for? No. If you have Give any, us, like, guess. partner tricks, we love around friendship. We, I mean, we, I feel like we conquered that pretty much. But we love even, like, a doubles trick where we do the same thing together. You know what I mean? Yeah, give us ideas. Mm. Yes, for sure, we're always open. But it's, like I said, it's hard because we do two different styles of play, so it's trying to figure out how to kind of blend them. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mo Quidama asked, when are you hosting another jam? Uh, shout out oh. to Penn State Harrisburg. Yes, that was Emily's friend that she was telling you about earlier. Oh, cool. She went to college with, and we met them and a group of their friends who came to the jam. Um, I don't know. We need to do one really soon before it gets, before too, it gets cold. too cold. Now is the perfect time because this is like perfect Dama weather in our opinion. So we got to hit a soon. weekend. Yeah. Maybe we can do like a spoopy one. Uh, yeah, mm. like a Halloween one. Yeah. Oh, we'll yeah. Get, get in some costumes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. No, the people but in our community already were like calling people. They're like, they have these toys and just walking around the park, they were like, what are they doing? I was burning sage and they're like, they're burning something. Maybe people already think we're in a cult for sure. I love it. That's, That's awesome. awesome. You might shout out uh, down in the chat. If anybody's got some good costume ideas, I think people should host Halloween parties for, for Kendama because you could actually get away with it because you're typically wearing a mask anyways for a Halloween costume. Um, but I think the best Halloween costume idea right now would be a plague doctor. Like get one of those big old beaks uh, oh, yeah. from like the 17th century. And you got, you already got a mask on that way. And it's part of your outfit. So 
Sorry. Pretty spooky. It might make playing Kanam a little difficult. You might not be able to see past the beak, but. Oh, just hit the beak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could probably do tricks with the beak. <laughs> Use the beak. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, let's try and hit up a couple more here. Um, this one is from Baked BMX Co. Uh, he is from Canada here. This is Kyler. And he asked, what is one trick you guys want to accomplish? What is one trick? Like, what's a trick you're chasing? This, that question's been asked a lot. So, like, even Kilo Dot Hawk here also asked, what's a current trick you're chasing or stoked on? I, I'm not currently chasing it, but now I feel like I might have to. For Steph, I'm trying to go for a Quint whirlwind. Five. That I, is so huge. Whenever I got my quad, I was, like, I was so close that I was just so tired, and I couldn't even do it anymore, and then I just haven't gone back to it. So, definitely that for me. Yeah, I think I'm going to – learned to inward lunar backflip last night so i want to chase a oh those yes oh um, i am so bad at those and i watch carter justice clips all the time and i get so frustrated because i don't know how he hits triples like that it's crazy uh yeah and to get a double one of those would be really cool so yes so something with those and then i need to keep up with my like one two I'm tr I need to go one, two, threes. I need, to get, I need to get one, two, three handle, and I need to get one, <coughs> two, three inward lunar, because I've gotten the ones and the twos for both of those, but I haven't, but I need to get that, that third in there. Yeah, one, two, know. three, four, world Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Last question. This one will be a great question to end on uh, because it's asked by our friend, Kendall Malicious, Cameron, hey! or Ronnie Tustank. Shout out to Stanktober. Uh, Ronnie <laughs> asked, what what are your favorite parts of Kendama? And this will be a great way to summarize everything that we've talked about today. Yes, the grind. I hate it. I love it. I hate to love it. But <laughs> it's the tricks that you grind so hard for. You walk away one day, no lace, and you're just so mad. And you're like, what? And then you finally lace it, and it's clean. And it's, it's just like the feeling of the spike. That is my favorite part, the lace after the grind. Like, the grind, it just is the epitome of why we keep playing, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what about for you, Lauren? A big part of it is getting, like, actually landing those tricks, the, is landing it. But another really big one is the people, obviously, meeting new people, and then taking it and being able to spread it yourself, because it, anyone can do it. It literally, like, watching it, connect people can on the connects worlds like watching mm -hmm. right in front of your eyes and then even now to like sort of be a part of it and be like part of the reason why it is being spread it's that's a, my favorite part one of my future parts yes <laughs> that's awesome well thank you ronnie for the great question to wrap us off here today uh, thank you, Em. Thank you, Lauren, so thank much. Thank you so much. It's been a blast. Uh, this is my favorite part of the week. Every week, I have never had a bad review. Uh, I love every guest that comes on here because it's just a great opportunity to, to, to chat about something that we mutually love and invite other people into that conversation. Mm -hmm. And the part that I really love about Kendama and, and about coffee is the, is the same. It's the way that it brings people together. Uh, and I like that, the, I really like in particular how it starts a conversation that typically starts really simple, like, oh, let's, or a trick that starts really simple, but then brings you even deeper and deeper and deeper. And so my hope with the review is to do the same thing, is to start a conversation that starts with Kendama, but leads to a much deeper place and connects people much more deeply as well. So thank you guys so much for jumping on here. Thank you, Nestle, for making your appearance here at the end. Uh, very much appreciate you. Um, in the last, uh, you know, 30 seconds here or so, uh, what is something you would want to say to all those that are listening out there from, from you two to the world? Thank you so much for your support and your love and all, all of that. I mean, yeah. specifically the support. I mean, it keeps us going. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. We love the shout outs, you know what I mean? When yeah. like we show you something you like to do, I love that. If you ever want to show off random tricks, mm -hmm. I love seeing that, you know what I mean? I know, yeah, like it's hard not to get down on yourself with Kendama sometimes, but like just try super hard not to. Like that's one thing I want to, because no matter what, you will get it. Like you're going to be, you're upset because you're not getting it. It's not clicking, but it will happen. It might not be right now, but it'll happen and just like chill and it'll be all worth it. <laughs>
keep grinding yes. and keep pursuing keep grinding. more. Dom is the best. Just always remember that. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. And for those of you that are tuned in, a little leak as to who's going to be on the show next week. We got Brian Skagline joining the preview next oh, week to talk yes. about. <laughs> yeah. We got Brian Skagline joining us to talk about his journey from Kusa to Chrome and what is next in Skag's journey with Kendama. What's next with Chrome? Uh, we're going to be talking with the Chromie over there. This will be our first Chrome rep on the show, so I'm stoked on that. Secondly, I want to remind you guys all that Brew Battle is happening in two weeks from now. And so if I don't reply to some of your messages, I'm so sorry. It is a very busy season getting ready to host an event. But I do love all your DMs. I love the support on the show. Uh, and one way that you can support the Brewview is A, by sharing this episode after it's, it's live on IGTV on your stories. Um, B, you can also hop onto the podcast platform of your choice or your favorite and give it a subscribe, give it a like, give it a follow, rate it. And that really helps this show get out to more people. So again, thank you, Em and Lauren. And we got three seconds till Instagram shuts down. So three, thank you so two, much.